Did you think for a minute that maybe it was 50% comedy, 50%, you know, tragedy? That was, that, that was something we told ourselves as we were trying to convince ourselves 50-50 wasn't a terrible title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, maybe that that's another that interpretation. That was what the, the marketing people kind of yeah. wrap their heads around. <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Is that yeah. right? And it's interesting how suddenly talking openly about cancer is kind of a hip thing these days. I mean, you've got the big C. Yeah. And you've got a, a lot of storylines on TV shows where you, you obviously – that didn't play into your mind. It no, I mean, we've been, you know, this is, we've been talking, we had been talking about this movie six years ago when I was actually sick. Yeah. So none of that. None you know, of that had happened None of that yet. had happened. So, uh, I mean, I think. But to us, there was no shame in it. I mean, honestly, I mean, we're, I guess, generally the, come from a school of thought that no, no topic is too taboo to talk about. I mean, I'm not the type of person that thinks talking about something can lead to a negative effect, which a lot of very stupid people do think, you know, and, and literally try to avoid conversations about but things. We're, we're comedy writers. Yeah, but we're comedy writers, so it's literally our job to delve deeper into those types of things, mm -hmm. you know, generally speaking. Push the, push the boundaries of what people find acceptable. Yeah, you know? so, I mean, when it happened to Will, I mean, we, no part of us thought, you know, maybe this is something we shouldn't be doing. We thought, no one's done this before, we, we, we have to do it. Well, you did a great job. Thanks. I think there were so Thank many you. moments in the movie where you cry. And I'm curious to know if there were parts of the movie that really had an impact on people that surprised you, as far as like if people got you know overly emotional in one particular scene that you may have thought, wow, I didn't think it would resonate that way. I, well, I think I, I wasn't expecting people to fall in love with the dog. As well. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think that's the thing that surprised me. I mean, I think yeah. the, amount of, the amount that people like are really affected. I don't think when we were making it, we realized how Yeah, I think much. it's an overall thing. Yeah, like, you know, we knew it was personal to us, but we had no idea how indicative our story was of other people's stories, right. you know? I mean, we didn't we didn't go out and do research. We didn't talk to tons and tons of people and say, like, did you guys make jokes? Because we made jokes. We just kind of went off of our own experiences. And then, if yeah, overall, I think what's surprising and, and great, but I think overall it's been kind of shocking to me how many people relate to the movie and how much they've been connecting to it. I mean, I, uh, you know, we thought we wanted it to be real and emotional, but I, you know, we didn't think it would necessarily have, it would make you cry. <laughs> um, here's one interesting thing that I had read, so many articles written about the movie already. And at the end of the movie, Pearl Jam's Yellow Lead Better yeah. is in the movie. Yeah. And you guys talk about how it was so expensive. It wasn't, yeah. I mean, for for a movie of this size, it was, I mean, I don't want to make paint Pearl Jam as some money-hungry institution. I mean, all songs are expensive, but especially, you know, a song like that is just, for a movie of this scale, pretty we, big. We had a really tiny budget. So. Yeah, we had a very small budget. So how is it that you chose a song that nobody can understand the words to? Well, that's actually why we chose it. Oh, uh, really? Well, I mean, One of the reasons. Yeah, one of the I reasons. Mean, I mean, it, it fits really well at the end because it's yeah. a really, like, strong song to end But we also on. found that every song with lyrics... Especially when you end the movie, like you really find yourself listening to the words and reading into them a lot. Oh, what does it mean? Is this what the whole movie's about? What they're saying and with this song? Felt so cheesy. Yeah, and everything felt so cheesy that we just picked a song that we love, and 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 it was nice because you can't understand what he's saying, so you can't read into it at all. You just kind of have to go along with, you know. And and it's a bluesy song, it and it's good, and like, it's at the same time it's like a happy and uplifting song. We we felt like tonally it fit what we wanted to do, and and it was nice that you can understand and, what he was and saying. And the movies in Seattle and Pearl Jam's from Seattle. Yeah, we thought like, that was a nice little connection. I yeah. mean, uh, there was a lot of reasons we chose that song. And Eddie Vedder actually was literally on his honeymoon when we were trying to clear the song and cleared it for us from his honeymoon, which was yeah. incredibly nice of yeah. him. <laughs> we, I mean, we didn't make those calls. Someone no. else made those yeah. calls, but yeah. But that, the, the, finding that last song was It's hard. Was That's hard. always one of yeah. the hardest parts yeah. of a movie. If you don't have the last song going in, and if it's not score, it can be very difficult to pick yeah. that song. Were there other songs on the table? Yeah, Tons. well, Jonathan, Levine, and I basically, we each picked together like 100 songs and then went through them and narrowed them down to like 10 songs for, for everybody to listen yeah, to. Yeah, then we all went to Levine's house and literally sat in front of a computer with the end of the movie playing and just watched it with different songs playing over it. And then and he play, and then he's like, and now there's this song, which there's no way we can afford, but it kind of works better than any of the other songs. Yeah. And as soon as we heard it, 
I got very mad because I knew we had to do it, and that ultimately would probably cost me a lot of money, <laughs> which yeah. it did. But I do think it is worth it. And yeah. It's great. There it, are a lot of great it's such songs. such a great ending. Yeah. Such great music in the movie, um, and a lot of great pop culture references. Um, when you're talking about Patrick Swayze, yeah. which is such an uncomfortably funny moment. Uh-huh. I'm curious to know if Patrick Swayze's family has seen it or did they I don't, know about it. I don't it? think so. I we haven't know. heard. But the thing, I mean, the important thing about that joke is we're not making fun of Patrick Swayze. We're making fun that my character just doesn't know Patrick Swayze's died. Is yeah. the, is the yeah. only joke. It's a joke of ignorance. But that, I'm curious yeah. to know, do you think in your heart of hearts, I think he, if he were like from heaven looking down, he'd maybe laugh at that? I hope that he I liked, would hope. I would hope that Patrick Swayze looking down from heaven likes the movie. That's I worked with, uh, Patrick Swayze was actually in the first movie I ever did. And uh, I worked with him and he was unbelievable great guy and seemed to have a very good sense of humor because he played a child molester in that movie <laughs> and it and it was kind of a funny movie so um I, I i would hope that he would not have been offended by that joke well that gives you a little bit of cred that a little tiny bit <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear you laugh seth thanks uh, do you, uh, does it would it upset you to hear that Howard Stern's replaced I know. your laugh with Anderson Cooper's laugh. It would have. Well, that's actually a, that, that that does not upset me because Anderson Cooper's laugh is probably even more ridiculous than mine. <laughs> mine at least sounds like it's coming from me. It sounds like it's coming from another person altogether. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the first scene uh, that you guys filmed. I read was the head shaving scene. Yeah. Well, we, did, did did the director do that first so there was some sort of comfort level? No, nope. it was purely for logistical reasons. We we, we he uh, Joe wore a wig the entire movie, so we had to we had to we had to shave his head first, so we had everything looked consistent. So it was consistent throughout the entire movie because so, you shoot movies out of order. It's never you know in so. We had to make him bald first, so every every time you see him with hair in the movie, he's wearing a wig. And looking back, honestly, it was it was the perfect. I mean, even though we only had one take, it was a good icebreaker. It was yeah. a great icebreaker because right. a lot of what we did with when shooting that scene was improvised. Like we we just came up with lots of names of um, famous a, bald, a famous people, bald yeah. men, and um, we just came up with lots of jokes. And it was a really loose scene. It was one of the loosest scenes we shot, and so. It worked. I mean, it worked really well. Yeah. Were you nervous? I mean, this, you have one chance here with the head shaving. Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous, honestly. It was the first day. So it, it was the first day, too, so it's not like you know your character as well as you do on the second day <laughs> or the third day. Um, and my reactions are pretty genuine. When I, I mean, I did not consciously make the choice to cover my face when he first starts doing it. I mean, it was... I, I was really uh, nervous about him doing it. And what's funny is, like, we kept doing the scene up till the point where he shaves his head over and over and over again, like, making sure we got that part right before he finally did it. And and I kind of didn't know when he was going to do it because the director was like, just run it a few times, and then whenever you get one that feels right, then just start doing it. And then and he just started doing it, and it horrified me. <laughs> what a brave actor he is to be yeah. able to step in and do that. Oh, my God. Joe is amazing. Yeah. Didn't Brent blink an eye. He's no. an incredible actor. Yeah. He really is. An, he yeah, is. there's no sense that... You never feel like he's acting at any moment. Never in the movie. once. I mean, it's never really once. Impressive. So incredible acting, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, um, also fantastic. Do, does she? She's got to play somebody who's nice now. She plays. I have to write a role for her. Yeah. But she plays a really nice person. <laughs> What's weird is she's literally one of the nicest people I've ever is, met in my she entire is really life. Sweet. Like she's it's not, insane she, how she considerate she is. <laughs> it's yeah, kind of weird that she can tap into that. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Will, how are you doing? Oh, I'm physically. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. So are you completely free and clear at this point? Free and clear, yeah, yeah. And since the movie is based on your friendship, did you ever question Seth and your friendship when all of this was going down as the character does in the movie? Um, I mean, I yeah, think there well, were... there were. Did you? <laughs> well, Seth, now that, we're, now that we're here talking about yeah. this... Um, uh, no, I mean, I, I think that there were times when we both got annoyed at each other because yeah. it was so intense. Right. But, I mean... I had, a, during that time, I had a lot of, a few people in my life who were really close to me, family members, friends, who couldn't deal with it, who just totally checked out and yeah. totally bailed and could not, I, like, would not talk to me. And Seth, you know, 
even though he didn't know what to do or what to say, you know, I, he, I was around a was lot. Never, there was never, there was never a point where Seth was not there for me. I know? was unemployed, so I had no excuse of where I would be. Also, <laughs> I couldn't say I was busy. Well, had he been employed, he might. Had have I been employed, I would have bailed. On had, you he been, had he been employed, this movie might have never no, been written. I would have had a really good excuse to not hang out. I with somehow you. find that very hard to read. Well, it's great to meet both of you. The movie's so wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much.